Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, design a circular queue. Basically we wanna implement this data structure, a circular queue, where the operations are performed uh, in FIFO order. So as we add elements to the queue, uh, we're gonna be removing the ones that were first inserted. So, you know, like suppose we added a one, we added two, we added three, then it's time to remove elements. We'd add the first one that was removed, then the second one, then the third one, et cetera, et cetera. So basically what you would expect from a queue data structure, but in this case, it's gonna be circular. And actually the fact that it's a circular queue isn't really gonna mean anything the way that we implement it. So there's really two main ways that you could implement this problem. One is using arrays, and that's not the way I'm gonna be doing it, just because I think it's a little bit more intuitive to do it the other way, which would be implementing it as a, a linked list. I think it's just a bit more intuitive to do it this way. I think it's slightly more code, but it's also slightly more efficient because with an array, you're going to have, uh, you know, the, the size of the queue is going to be an input parameter we're given, which is K. We're gonna have to create an array of that size, but with linked lists, we don't really need to do that. We only need as much memory as there are elements in the queue at any given point in time. But just to give you kind of an idea of how it would go with an array, suppose, you know, K equals three, then we'd have three elements. So our array would be of size three. Let's say we add a one. Okay, then we add a two, then we add a three. And then when it's come to pop an element, of course, we're gonna pop from the left side. So, okay, we remove there, but now it's time to add another element. Suppose we wanna add the value four. Well, there's no space over here, but there is space over here. So we would add the four over here. And that's where the idea of a circular queue comes from because now we can add at the other side of it. But you're probably thinking now, if we have to pop an element, are we gonna pop the four? Because that's not FIFO, right? We should pop the two. And yes, we are gonna pop the two if we have to pop a value. The way we're gonna implement this, by the way, would be uh, with two pointers. So the first pointer would be, you know, the uh, front of the queue and the other uh, would be the end of the queue, the, the rear of the queue, I guess. It, the rear would not be here in this case. The rear would actually be four because four is the last value that we just added. So, you know, let's say we pop the two now. Okay, we pop the two, then we would say that this is the front of our queue now. Uh, now, if we wanted to add a queue, so this is no longer the front, the rear of our queue is still over here. If we wanted to add another value, we'd add it after the rear, so we would add the value over here now. So that makes sense, and it's not too difficult to implement it this way, but we are gonna be implementing it slightly differently. We're gonna use a linked list. So let me show you how to do that. So first, let me actually run through the operations that we're gonna implement, and then I'm gonna show you how we can efficiently actually implement those. So we're gonna initialize the circular queue with a limited size of K, that's the max number of elements we can have in it. Uh, we're gonna have an operation front, which is going to, uh, let's say that this left side is the front of our queue, and let's say the right side is the rear of our queue. Front is basically gonna return what value is at the front of our queue if one exists. If it doesn't exist, we would return negative one. Similarly, on the rear of the queue, we wanna get the value of it. If it doesn't exist, we can return negative one. NQ is going to be the operation that adds a value to the end of the queue. This is the end of the queue, the rear of the queue. This is where we're gonna be adding values to. And uh, if we are, if we have enough space to add a value, we're gonna add it right here, and then we're gonna return true. If we don't have enough space, we're gonna return false. Similarly with DQ is where we remove elements. We're gonna remo remove elements uh, from the front of the queue over here. If there is an element for us to remove, we're gonna remove it and return true. If there's no elements to remove, we're gonna return false. Is empty and is full are actually helper functions pretty much for us. We can actually use these functions for the NQ and DQ operations. So is empty is basically gonna tell us, are there any elements in our queue? If there's not, we're gonna return true. If there is, we return false. Similarly with is full, if we have no space left, we're gonna return true, it is full. If we uh, have space, we return false for that. So 
Knowing that, we clearly know we're going to be needing to interact a lot with the front of the queue and the back of the queue. So the easiest way to do this, as I've shown, is using a couple dummy nodes. If you're not familiar with dummy nodes, it's basically just to remove edge cases, right? As we add values to a linked list and remove values, we run into a lot of edge cases. What if the linked list is empty? Well, what if it has one value? What if it has two values? What if the node we're looking at is in the middle of the linked list or at the end of the linked list or at the front of the linked list? There's a lot of edge cases. Dummy nodes remove those edge cases for us because uh, this, a left node is our, our dummy node on the left. Right is always going to be the dummy node on the right. So therefore, any value that we add or remove from the queue is always going to be in the middle of the queue. Therefore, we don't have any edge cases. And also, these nodes could be singly linked list if we wanted to, but we're going to make them doubly linked lists because, as you can see, we're going to need to be reading values from here and also values from here. So we're going to need the second pointer. Okay, suppose we wanted to add a value now. Well, we would just create a new linked list node. Uh, let's say the value of it is one. We would say, okay, the left node, which is our dummy node's next pointer, instead of being, uh, instead of pointing at the right node, because how we're actually going to initially initialize this is going to be like this. Uh, these two nodes are going to be pointing to each other and there's nothing in the middle. But as we introduce a new node, like one in the middle, we're going to want to obviously rearrange these pointers. We're going to actually say that this pointer should be now pointing at one and the previous pointer here instead of pointing at left it should be pointing at one as well and of course the pointers from here are going to be pointing at the right node and uh, be going to be pointing at the left node now if we have to add another value actually i don't know if i said the opposite earlier but we're always going to be adding values here because it's the end of the queue right so in this case we could add a value you know in the middle here but really where we want to add it is over here so uh, we let's say we add a two value here obviously this pointer which was previously pointing here is now going to have to point at this node uh, this pointer which was pointing at this one is now going to have to point at this node as well the pointers of this are going to be pretty simple next and previous and the rest of the operations like is empty is full are going to be pretty simple for us for is full we're just going to keep track of a counter if we have reached our capacity of values then this function will be easy to determine for front and rear the way we've implemented this solution it will be very simple so right now if we wanted the front of the queue we would just look at our left uh, pointer look at the next node and then take the value of it of course only if the value existed if it didn't exist we return negative one so in this case we would return one if we wanted the rear of the queue we do the opposite uh, with the rightmost node look at the previous node take the value of it and then return two now, the last operation, the interesting one that we haven't looked at is DQ, where we're going to have to remove a value. This is a mostly straightforward linked list operation. So we know that the node that we're going to have to remove is going to be over here. But before we even remove a node, we would want to make sure that our uh, linked list is not empty. If it's empty, we're not going to do anything. But if it isn't empty, then we're going to have to remove a value. We would look at our left node. This is the side that we're going to be removing elements from. How are we going to remove it? Well, simply by updating the pointer. So this pointer, instead of pointing here, since we want to get rid of this, we're going to update this pointer as well to now point at the next one. Similarly, this uh, node it, maybe it exists and if this node didn't exist we would have to obviously use this node because at least we guarantee that we're going to have a node on the right side of it but in this case we do have this node what we're going to do is uh, want to update the previous pointer because this node doesn't exist anymore so we can get rid of this and swap it to be over here so that's pretty much the entire uh, operations that we're going to be implementing. It's pretty easy as long as you use a doubly linked list and you have a dummy pointer on the right and a dummy pointer on the left. So now let's code it up. Okay, so now let's code it up. And uh, this is basically you know the data structure that we're given, but we know that we want to have a linked list node, a doubly linked list node. So I'm going to call it list node. And the constructor in this case is going to take a couple inputs so self is just a reference to the variable the object itself k is going to or not k value is going to be the value of the list node next is going to be the next pointer of the list node and previous is going to be the previous pointer of the list node so we're just going to basically save all three of these values in variables so self dot value self dot next pointer self dot previous pointer are going to be assigned to the value 
the next pointer and the previous pointer. So that's pretty simple. Obviously, I could have broken this down into three lines, but I don't really care. So now we want to initialize our Q. We're given a, a value K, which is gonna be the maximum capacity of the Q. I'm just gonna store that in a single variable, which is the amount of space that we have left over right now. So that's gonna be assigned to the, val uh, the variable K. And we're gonna be decrementing this as we run out of space, and we're gonna be incrementing it as we gain more space. Next, we want to, of course, initialize our left and right pointers. Left, in this case, is gonna be a list node. Now, the value we give it doesn't really matter. We're just gonna give it a default value of zero. The next pointer is going to be none for now. It's gonna be null. The previous pointer is also gonna be null for now. We're also gonna initialize the right pointer, which is also gonna be a list node, a default value of zero. Now, the, the next pointer of it is gonna be none, uh, but the previous pointer we can say is gonna be self.left because we've already initialized the left pointer. That's gonna be the previous uh, node from the right. Also, we want to make sure that the next node of the left is also the right node. So let's do that with the line below, self.left.next is gonna be the right pointer. So now we've basically initialized a doubly linked list of two dummy nodes. So for is empty, we know that it's empty if there's no values in the node. Basically, if only the left and right dummy nodes exist. How do we know if those are the only nodes that exist? Well, we can literally check that. We can check left.next is equal to the right node, uh, the right dummy node. If that's the case, then these are the only two nodes that exist. So that we know for sure it's empty. We technically don't even need the space variable in this case, but the space variable is gonna come in handy for the is full operation. We know that it's full if there's no more space left. So basically if uh, self.space is equal to zero, in that case, we can just return that. Okay, so those were the easy ones. Now let's get to slightly harder operations like front and rear. So how do we get the value at the front of the queue? Well, first we have to make sure that it's not empty because if self dot is empty, if the queue is empty, what are we gonna return? Well, they told us to return a default value of negative one, but if it's not empty, then we're gonna return uh, self dot left, right? The next node from the left and then return the value of it. Similarly, for the rear of the queue, we want to make sure first that it's not empty, and then we want to return the, uh, the rightmost value. So we're gonna say self.right, and we want the node before the right node, so self.right.previous, and the value of it. So we've almost finished this uh, entire problem, but now we just have to take care of the hard ones like NQ and DQ. So adding a value to the queue, can only be done if there's enough space. So if self.space is equal to zero, that means we don't have enough space. So then we have to return and we have to return false because we couldn't successfully complete the operation. But if there is space, then we're gonna add it to the right side of the queue. So first we're gonna actually create a list node. So let's do that. The value of the list node is gonna be value. The next pointer of the new node that we're creating is gonna be self dot right, the rightmost node. What's going to be the previous pointer of the new node that we're creating? It's just gonna be the current node that's to the left of the right node. So we could also say self dot right dot previous. That's gonna be the previous uh, pointer of the new node that we're creating. So we created this node, let's assign it to a variable called cur for now. And now we just wanna update the pointers of the node that's to the right of it and the node that's to the left of it. So we want to say, first let's start with the left node and you'll see why I'm gonna do that. Uh, so self dot uh, right dot previous, we want its next pointer to be pointing at uh, the current node now instead of pointing at the right node. So literally we're just gonna do this. Remember, this is the node that's to the left of cur, and we're setting the next pointer now equal to cur. And after that, we also wanna update the, the node that's to the right of cur, which is self.right, and we wanna say self.right.previous is now gonna be equal to cur. 
you can see why I did these two assignments in this order. Because if I did this one first, then uh, you know this operation would have been different. This would not have been updating the node that's to the left of Kerr. And if it's kind of confusing, I would recommend drawing it out uh, yourself just to confirm. After we've added a value, we can go ahead and return true. But before we even return true, we also want to make sure that we update the space of the queue. So self dot space is going to be decremented by one. So that wasn't too bad and we only have one operation left, DQ. So before we DQ, we want to make sure uh, actually, before we even do that, I realized uh, here we checked if space was equal to zero, but we technically did that in our is full function. So just to kind of make this a little bit cleaner, let's just actually reuse that function that we already wrote. So if is full, then we can return false. Now we want to remove an element now. We can't remove an element if our queue is empty. So if is empty, we're going to return false because we can't complete this operation successfully then. But if it's not empty, then we can remove the node and we want to remove the node that's on the left side. So we can do that pretty simply by saying left dot next. Uh, instead of pointing at the next node, we want it to actually point at the node after that. So we can literally uh, do something like this. It's going to be quite a lot of chains. So self dot next dot next. We're basically shifting that next pointer to point at the node that comes after it. So now that this is pointing at the node that comes after it, we also want to update the previous pointer of that node to now no longer point at the, uh, the node that we're removing right now. So this dot previous is going to be set to self dot left. I know this is probably confusing because it's kind of abstract. That's why I recommend drawing it out if it doesn't make sense to you. And remember, if we remove a element from our queue, then we have to increment the space by one because there's a new free space and we can return true to say that the, the DQ operation was successful. So that is the entire code. I know it's uh, pretty long that it doesn't even fit on one screen, but the bottom stuff is pretty straightforward. It's really these NQ and DQ functions that's difficult and the constructor, but let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, Yes, it does, and it's very efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel, and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.